Hello again and welcome. Today we're going to be using the Bryman BM789 to run a little experiment with our transient generator. So every time that we've used this transient generator to test these meters, I've talked about the peak voltage and the full width half height, and I've also talked about the amount of energy that it can produce and how low it is. And of course we've shown what those open circuit voltages look like. The one thing I have never done is shown what the current waveform looks like. So today what I'd like to do is look at the amount of current that flows through this meter when we supply these transients. So to start out, I have my Tektronics P6042 current probe. I saved this old current probe from the landfill. From what I remember, at least half of the transistors were bad inside of this. Unfortunately, the transistors that were used in this are no longer available, so I've substituted some different ones. An interesting side note about that is I actually wrote Robert Peace because I knew, you know, an old-timey guy like him would know about transistor selection. So I had an interesting discussion with him about matching transistors for this. Anyway, so this has totally been rebuilt. So we're going to be using this today to look at the current that goes through the meter. Of course, I've mentioned that this transient generator has a 2-ohm source impedance. So, for example, at 1,000 volts peak, that's limited to 500 amps or 1,000 divided by 2. What I have here, this is a 5K ohm resistor. We're going to use this as a starting point to look at the current. Here's the output of the transient generator. And it's just attached directly across the resistor. And our oscilloscope probe is attached directly across the resistor as well. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and degauss our current probe. And again, this is just a clamp type. You have to be very careful with these. You can see I've attached the current probe to the ground return of the transient generator. Kirchhoff's current law, of course, says that we could place it in either the high or the low, but there's no reason to expose this probe to the high common mode voltage that's going to exist between the output of the transient generator. So if something were to break down, this is just going to be a safer way to instrument this. So let me go ahead and we'll turn on the transient generator. And let's just fire off a transient. And that's what it looks like. So, I don't know if this is better. We can do this with a single display. And let me just detach this camera real quick. So this is looking at the P6042 current probe. You can see it's set at 100 milliamps per division. And that's assuming that the oscilloscope is set for 50 millivolts per division. And again, this is requiring that the oscilloscope uses a 50 ohm input. So if we look at our oscilloscope, you can see we have it set for 50 ohms and it's also set for 50 millivolts per division. We have the bandwidth limiting filter set on both channels to 20 megahertz. You can see the second channel or channel 1 is set for 500 volts per division. Of course we can see both waveforms are two divisions up. So for the voltage with the yellow trace Two divisions is going to be two times 500 volts or 1,000 volts peak. And of course, two divisions up for the current we said is 100 milliamps per division or 200 milliamps peak. And of course, 1,000 volts divided by the 5K ohm resistor is going to give us 200 milliamps. The current probe has a DC bias. Let's go ahead and just zero that out. Go back to normal. And let's give it another transient. And there you go. So again, two divisions up or 200 milliamps at 1000 volts. So what happens if we replace this 5K ohm resistor with our meter? Let's go ahead and set the BM789 to its AC volt mode. And again, we'll go ahead and apply a single transient. Let's have a look. So you can see there's a very short current spike. Let's just zoom in on this a little bit. You can see I changed our time scale to 5 microseconds per division. And of course the red trace is the current and the yellow is the voltage. And you can see we get this real small current spike. And you can see it goes up again to about 200 milliamps and then decays. Now again to be clear we are bandwidth limiting the input. That current is probably quite a bit higher than 200 milliamps. It's probably several amps. But as you can see, essentially the meter isn't drawing any current. It wouldn't unless something were to break down. 
Now let's place it into the ohms mode. Again, the way that these meters typically work, we'll have some surge rated resistor, and that's typically in series with the PTC, and then that'll be in series with usually two MOVs that are placed in series going back to ground. And then on the back side of this, there'll be some kind of a high speed clamp, and that's typically made up of two transistors that are placed back to back. On a typical meter, the MOVs will limit to about 1.5 kV, maybe 2 kV on the high side. And then these transistors will clamp it to about 6 volts. So what ends up happening is the voltage is balanced between the PTC and the resistor. The resistors on the meters are typically 1K ohm. PTCs typically around 1.3K ohms. And of course, the transients that we're talking about, there's so much thermal mass with the PTCs that they don't respond. So it'll basically just act like a normal resistor. So with the BM789 set to its resistance input, we've engaged one of the high-speed clamps. So let's see how that affects our current. And you can see it's basically gone off scale. Let's go ahead and change the current range to one amp per division. And then we'll apply another set of transients You can see our peak current is now one and a half divisions up or roughly one and a half amps peak. You can see it really hasn't affected the shape of the decay. So again, this meter handled this 1 kV transient just fine. There were no signs of any breakdown. This was one of the non-functional prototypes that Ryman had supplied me for the BM780 series. So our peak current is limited by the 1 k ohm resistor that's in series with this PTC minus the 6 volts or so drop of that high speed clamp. That should give us about a half an amp of current. But of course there's two of these in parallel. My guess is in this mode both of these clamps are engaged so the equivalent resistance is probably half of that. So we're looking at upwards of an amp. So what would happen if the meter were to break down? In this case we're talking about a thousand volts that's limited by a 2 ohm internal source resistance plus our cabling. But essentially we're talking about a peak of 500 amps. Now our little Tektronix current probe cannot measure that. So in order to look at these higher currents we're going to use this Pearson pulse current transformer. This particular one is a model 410. You can see it outputs 0.1 volts per amp and that's into a 50 ohm load. This is looking at the data sheet for this particular model. Sensitivity again is 0.1 volts per amp. It's meant to drive into a 50 ohm load. It can handle a peak current of 5000 amps. The low frequency 3 dB point, of course it's a current transformer so it can't measure DC, is approximately 120 Hz. That's going to be fine. And the high frequency 3 dB point is 20 MHz. We're expecting a peak current of roughly 500 amps. At 0.1 volts per amp, we're talking about 50 volts peak. And we can see, of course, our oscilloscope with a 50 ohm selection is rated for 5 volts RMS. So putting 50 volts into that oscilloscope probably isn't going to be too healthy for it. So what we're going to be doing is using an attenuator. This one is 20 dB. That's going to reduce our voltage by a factor of 10x. We'll go ahead and place that in series with our current transformer. Again, we'll just place this in series with the return. And with our lead shorted, let's go ahead and give it a transient. You can see our oscilloscope is now set at 1 volt per division. You can see I've gone ahead and turned off our filter. And that's because we're interested in looking at the peak current. It's going to be a very short transient. And you can see we're a little over one division up. So a little over 100 amps. Quite a bit lower than we would expect. But again, you can see how it has this kind of a rounded shape. So that's telling me that we are severely limited in our bandwidth. The current probably is about 500 amps peak, as we'd suggest. I believe the fact that the waveform was rounded like what we're seeing is an indication that we are limited in bandwidth probably by that current transformer. So rather than dead shorting the transient generator, I have a 10 ohm resistor and of course that will be in series with the 2 ohm source impedance of the generator. So we're talking about roughly 12 ohms 
with a thousand volts were just a little over 80 amps 85 ish or so amps and you'll notice also I've got an additional current transformer I made a video about this current transformer this is used in a standard Stewart core let's just go ahead and we'll kick off a single transient and this pulse right here this is coming off of the Stewart core I've zoomed in quite a bit this is 500 nanoseconds per division I believe that this is basically the problem that we're providing such a fast transient into this Pearson transformer that it just doesn't have the bandwidth to display it so I think that's going to be it for this short little video so hopefully that's helped answer some of your questions as far as what the current looks like through the meter when we're applying these transients well that's all for now stay safe and until the next video hope to see you then later